One of the things that, that you've been very outspoken about, one of the topics is Mike Rapoli, the self-proclaimed commissioner, um, whose original idea was to build a community of leaders to get together around the table and try to, um, as, as he put it, try to get the Titanic away from the iceberg. Um, yet it seems like that that's not the direction that he's going in right now. And and he's he's thrown some barbs your way. Um, what do you feel about Mike's idea? And, and, and do we need to have a commissioner or a czar in racing? Well, I uh, responded initially to his announcement of the formation of, of the NTA, National Thoroughbred Alliance, which is his baby. And um, the essence of how I reacted was that uh, almost everyone I would think who is in the game shares at least some of Mike's goals, um, maybe most of them, maybe all of them. Uh, but the problem, I'd say there are two main problems that I've had with how Mike has, uh, has rolled out his effort over the last few months. The first is the question of how his stated goals might realistically be accomplished. You know, it, it, I'm not going to suggest that it's easy to even uh, uh, talk in a in a simple way about how to solve the myriad problems that the the racing game is is grappling with at this stage. Um, but it's certainly a lot easier to talk about them than it is to to have some plan of action that. Uh, that seems realistic, and and I'm I'm skeptical of of at least some of of what Mike's stated goals are, uh, not least of which would be well um, when we were talking about the mayor cap, and perhaps we'll get more deeply into that topic later in the discussion. Uh, but he he seems to be on the one hand on board with the idea of a mayor cap, but I asked him, I challenged him to explain how someone like John Magner uh, might also be on board with it. Uh, because as wealthy as Mike may be, you know, we're talking about orders of magnitudes difference in terms of power in the industry. And uh, I just, you know, think that it's not, I don't mean to single out Magner, he's certainly not alone, but uh, the people who who have real power in the in the breeding industry are... I think rather unlikely to choose to adopt uh, changes, let alone radical changes, that are going to adversely impact their bottom lines. And so, even if Mike himself uh, is willing to make some significant personal sacrifices, which would be admirable, I think that that there are some very real questions about whether or not others uh, who are much more powerful than him would follow suit. The second issue that I have with him, which is what uh, was primarily the source of the sparring that he and I have been doing on Twitter, is the obvious and really quite remarkable dissonance between what he talked about when he stated his original goals with the NTRA and uh, how he's gone about uh attempting to make progress in those areas. I mean, you know, he, he talked about the need for uh, an alliance, for reaching out to the various uh, industry stakeholders. I mean, I, I'll quote specifically from one of his, from one of his uh, you know, initial tweets. I want this to be an, be an alliance, not a club or association, because clubs and associations are exclusive, where you have to pay to join them or be voted in. The alliance is inclusive, and it's what's missing in the game. There is no one looking at the game holistically as one brand. No one has a vision for what's going on. This will be a shared vision. It's about unity. It's about getting people to work together. Well, okay, that all sounds terrific, but... Then he has been uh, consistently insulting uh, the chairman of the jockey club, Stuart Janney, and has been, has been disparaging about the jockey club more broadly speaking. And I have challenged him repeatedly about that, and he doesn't back down. And it really leads me to wonder uh, whether or not he's... Uh, in a position to seriously lead uh, an organization that that has the goals of uh, of major reform in the industry. 
Yeah, I mean, listen, this is my initial take from Rapoli announcing this National Thoroughbred Alliance was that it seemed a little bit redundant considering the advent of HISA and the federal regulation and oversight and kind of umbrella organization coming in that we've been wanting and and crying out for, I think, for a long time in racing to have that unification. You know, do you how do you feel about that? Like, do you think there's space for a Rapoli led organization and HISA? Do you think that they should just work together? And just what's what's your feeling? I know it's a very multi-part question, but like what's your feeling about the first year, year and a half of HISA? Like, is it doing its job or does it need help from guys like Rapoli? Well, that's a big question. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I'll I'll try to I'll try to uh, keep my my response uh, limited to some extent. You know, ideally, I think we could all agree. Ideally, the racing industry would have an authoritative centralized body like those that are found in other sports, the major sports. Now, there are a lot of reasons why that's probably not a realistic option, but um, that would be ideal. HISA, I don't think was ever designed to be that or even close to that. I think that HISA was designed to help the industry to become uh, more cohesive and consistent with regard to certain aspects of the industry, you know, including obviously horse safety, uh, the PED issues, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, the, uh, you know, the HISA, we can talk about HISA in depth. Um, but I, on the one hand, I do think that there is room for another authoritative body uh, alongside HISA that could help with uh, aspects of the industry that HISA isn't really designed to address uh, or have any power over. But whether Mike Rapoli and his nascent NTA are likely to you know, develop into that role, I think is, uh, is highly questionable at this point. 